Right, hello everybody and welcome back to the most irrelevant channel here on YouTube. I hope you're all doing well. And obviously it wouldn't be me if I didn't obviously jump on the bandwagon about, you know, a few days too late. So we're going to be talking about obviously England's World Cup kind of, you know, how they got on, how I felt we did, kind of a little ramble and a waffle, a, a, a raffle, I don't know, that was that was terrible. Uh, but obviously going through and obviously just letting you know my, my opinions, my thoughts, and uh, hopefully you know get some discussion in the comment section down below as well so before we start obviously my ramble today let me know in the comment section down below how well you thought uh, England did and also if you didn't follow England if you maybe was a Sweden fan or you know you're from Sweden obviously then that would make more sense then let me know how you kind of thought your nation or the team that you followed did in that comment section down below as well but obviously I'm I'm from England. Hopefully, I'm kind of recording this kind of on the go. You know, not the best setup. Or it's fair, my sound quality is gonna be terrible. So hopefully, I won't get any background noise or anything like that. But obviously, we'll kind of um, you know, we've already gone off on a tangent already. Now let's draw it back in. We're talking about England now. So my thoughts on England overall. First of all, I've just got to say that I'm one very proud Englishman indeed. I think the England team can, you know, they're, they're going to be welcomed back, at, you know, almost like heroes because they did so well. And I know some people are out there saying, you know, but you played rubbish teams, but you can only beat the teams that are put in front of you. It wasn't England's fault. Well, I suppose maybe the whole Sweden, Colombia thing, that might be England's fault. Um, but, you know, we, we was drawing that group. We could only, you know, play against teams that we were drawn against. That technically wasn't all England's fault. And at the end of the day, you know, yes, you know, Tunisia did cause a little bit of issues, but I still think, although it was only 2-1 scoreline, uh, I still think we, 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 we did enough to easily beat them. Obviously, Panama, yes, we conceded one, but again, we have to beat them. The Belgian match is just a write-off. Both teams weren't trying to win that match. It was just ridiculous. I really did not enjoy that. That's the one thing I did not enjoy seeing in the World Cup. Um, uh, obviously against Colombia, yes, they took us all the way, but I still felt we was in control of the game for the majority of it. I, you know, I felt they were trying to, you know, they had a game plan of coming out, roughing us up, and, you know, it kind of, you know, did work a little bit, but I think the England players did really well to keep their head off. Kind of was a little bit worried about Jordan Henderson at one point, but, you know, I think they did really well at kind of keeping, you know, the, the very level-headed and and uh, trying to stick to our game, our game task while they were trying to obviously stick to theirs. Um, and then obviously against Sweden, Sweden was the best game for me, very convincing performance and I kind of wish what we kind of took that into the game against Croatia because generally with England I always find that they have a mentality of, you know, yes we, we're quite defensively solid in a, in a way and we're kind of, you know, we will attack, get into good attacking positions and it's always that kind of, you know, not being clinical enough in front of goal, that's what's always kind of, you know, kind of tipped us over the edge yeah I quite, kind of thought you know we were actually scoring here we're scoring yet yeah, you know, we're still doing the whole kind of trying to score the perfect goal almost like what Arsenal do sometimes trying to walk the ball in rather than just having a go from outside the box I know at one point we had the lowest uh, I think it was in the quarterfinals or I think we had one of the lowest um, shot rates on, on goal which was ridiculous to get to that point in the tournament and still have you know, a very low shot rate um, it, it was just it was slightly disappointing but at the same time you know we did score a fair few goals. And the, for me, the Sweden game, the reason why it was the best one is because when we scored, we didn't just sit back then and take, oh, but you know, we've, we're know we only one, we're one nil ahead now. We can kind of, you know, have a little bit of a break and, um, you know, we don't have to kind of push too much. We're now in the lead. We're now, in, you know, in the ascendancy. Let's kind of take our foot off the gas and uh, and have kind of uh, 20 minutes of, of calming down. That's We didn't do that. We kind of just went at them completely. The whole game, we were just trying to score. Uh, and even when we was back against the walls, you know, the defensive display there against, you know, the, the whole back line really was just really, really uh, pleasing to see. We're kind of going to, you know, dissect the Croatia game a little bit more because that's the one that's fresh in my memory. Uh, and then obviously I will be talking about, obviously, just the World Cup in general as well, my whole feelings on the tournament so far. But the the Croatia game for me, England's obviously great start, cracking start to the game. Came in Trippier with, you know, at the time, obviously, I got, you know, the kind of emotions were running high and, you know, I thought it was one of the best free kicks I'd ever seen. That that wasn't the case um, because when you watch it back, yeah, it was a good free kick. It was a good free kick, but I think my emotions were, were a bit, you know, fairly high and I kind of thought it was the best free kick I'd ever seen in the world. Uh, um, which, you know, watch it, as I said, watching it back, it was good, but it, it wasn't the best free kick in the world. Um, it was, you know, the goalkeeper didn't, he was a little bit too far over in the wrong direction for me. I think if he would have set himself in a better starting position, he, he, he probably would have got to that, to be fair. 
Uh, but it's still a very, very good free kick. Great start, obviously, the match. Uh, my, my throat was killing me after, uh, you know, celebrating that one. Uh, and then we kind of just sat back a little bit, but not too much. You know, we were still on the offensive. And to be fair, Harry Kane should have made it to... I know the referee put his, his flag up, but that would have been uh, taken to VAR, and VAR would have overturned it because he was onside. Um, you know, I think he sh definitely should have buried that one away. Raheem Sterling was causing a lot of issues um, in the first half. Obviously, balls over the top into the, kind of the channels, uh, and, and, you know, he, his pace was, was scaring them. So I was quite surprised to see us not doing more of that in the second half. Uh, to me, Harry Kane, you know, been dropping deeper and deeper at some points, you know, almost been playing in goal for us, uh, standing alongside Pickford. And it was just kind of like, what, what's he doing? I can understand he wants to get involved in the game. He's the captain. Uh, and, you know, but Raheem was still standing there. But at the end of the day, he is our goal scorer, our out-and-out goal scorer. He needs to, you know, play up top where he can get the goals and all that kind of stuff. Um, it would have been nice to see Harry Kane play as a striker in that game rather than defensive midfielder or, or sweeper keeper or whatever he was playing. But, you know, Raheem, for me, he did play well. I know he didn't score many go or any goals, uh, but he did play well in that game. I think he was very impressive, very dangerous. Uh, I think we should have utilised it more. I'd have liked to have seen, actually, to be perfectly honest, I'd have liked to have seen, um, I think Harry Kane looked absolutely drained. Like the, the burden of having the whole nation kind of on his shoulders just got to him at that point. And I would have actually liked to have seen him taken off and maybe just brought Kane and Rashford on. So we had Rashford... You know, on one side, Sterling on the other, Va sorry, Kane and Rashford, Vardy and Rashford brought on, um, which I know we did do, but having, you know, Vardy, Vardy kind of as the central striker and then Rashford and Sterling supporting him, uh, just banging the balls over the top, and that, that would have got them. I think, honestly, think that would have got them. And then maybe just brought Loftus Cheek on as well, just to kind of shore things up, playing, playing him alongside. Uh, Henderson for me when he brought Dyer on I was a little bit like I oh, don't really understand that one Dyer didn't have a bad game when he did come on but it was a like for like substitution and I wasn't too sure what the thought process other than Jordan Henderson possibly being absolutely knackered I wasn't 100% sure of the thought press, uh, th process behind that one I thought if we're looking up to kind of shut up shop but just catch them on the counter attack it's about having the two players in front of them so maybe we brought Dyer on and Henderson or you know, maybe Loftus Cheek could have sat there and played alongside Henderson, and then we just spring on top of them every single time we've got the ball and just play into maybe you know Trippier or or Rose at that point possibly, um, and looking to counter attacks into the to the, the the pace of the front three. I think that would have been the best option to go for. That's the only kind of criticism I've really got of Gareth in this incident that he just brought on the same players and played the same formation. There was no plan B as such. You know, there was. I think we should have gone almost three, uh, four, three, three at that point, really. Four or four, four. Uh, sorry, not four, three, three. Five, two, three. Um, with the three strikers, um, and, and just the wing backs, just playing very centrally in a, in a way, and just all three of them just running at the defence, just going for it. Especially when we conceded that second goal. Uh, sorry, especially when we conceded the first goal to just get it done before extra time. I think that's what I'd have liked to have seen from Gareth. And um, but other than that, as I said, guys immensely proud of what they've done i know people are going to say oh but you only play shit teams i can already see that's going to be coming i don't care i honestly do not care we, we beat the teams that were in front of us we could only beat them teams that were, were kind of drawn against and we and we did it and we got to the semi-final of a world cup which is massive it just goes to show and we've all we all said in in, in england i don't know if it's consensus or anything but everyone i've spoke to before the tournament we didn't really have many expectations i did in my podcast not my podcast my uh, prediction video i said that the minimum and maximum expectation for england really should be the quarterfinals which we did we did we surpassed that we surpassed my expectations and we surpassed a lot of people's expectations a lot of people were expecting us to get out of the group stage and then flop straight away like we always do um but even then you know i don't think we, people would have been disappointed because we weren't expecting it and to kind, kind, of, kind of come away with a you know a name now uh, in the you know potentially in the record books for hopefully third place spot if we can grab it off Belgium. It's going to be a great game, that one, to be fair. I know, I know a lot of people, of people pay attention to the third place playoff. And I've even some, seen some uh, people, even to be fair, I watched Loki's video the other day and he was saying, like, who cares about it? Me, as an Englishman, I care if we finish third or fourth. Um, you know, I still want to finish third. Uh, it's, I think it's going to be a really interesting game and a really good one to see, hopefully, England's A and Belgium's A team this time playing. Um, so yeah, can't wait to see that one unfold. But as I said, guys, uh, the World Cup as a whole, I think it's been really, really fun. It's been great to see some of the, the smaller nations get 
uh, get through some of the bigger nations get knocked out as well obviously i do feel sorry for like you know the likes of spain and germany but at the end of the day you know it made it, they made the world cup a better world cup for, for me obviously not for, for them lot over there but um i mean people again i keep seeing people saying you know oh but you know england said it was coming home yeah we only said it was coming home when we you know when we got through past uh, Colombia because we won on penalties. It was a bit, yeah, there was a hype train going and a lot of people jumped on it. And then people were saying, oh, you know, it was all everyone was talking about. The story was all about England. No, it was not. If you were in Croatia, the whole story of the World Cup would not be about England. It'd be about how Croatia have done really, really well, beating Argentina 3-0. If he was in Mexico, they would not be saying, oh, this World Cup's all about England. No, of course it's not. What a stupid thing to say. Whichever country you're in, uh, and even if you're not participating, maybe then, yes, maybe. But, you know, I've seen people from Australia saying, oh, the World Cup was all about England. No, it wasn't. Your team was there as well. Surely you were all thinking about, oh, you know, you know, this is our year. We can finally prove something. You, surely you weren't thinking, uh, there's no way in the whole of Australia, everyone was talking about England. This is England year. In, you know, no, a bullshit. I'm calling bullshit on that because I've seen a lot of people saying it. That you know, a lot of people not from England saying that this whole World Cup was all touted about England. Yeah, in England it was, but if, well, even then it went, you know, only probably half the population were were thinking that England were going to do any good. Um, but yeah, absolute bullshit. Um, as I said, the whole the World Cup as a whole, though, I think it was a great event. Russia have done really, really well. Round of applause, Russia. That that's a round of applause. I know you can't see it. It's nothing else. Nothing. Nothing rude or dirty. Um, it was a round of applause. But yeah, they've done a really, really, really well. Uh, violence to, to a minimum. Obviously, a lot of people were expecting a lot of hostility and all that kind of stuff. That doesn't seem to have happened. And um, yeah, just really, really well put on. I've you not heard any sort of transport issues or anything like that. Um, grounds have been good, full as well. You know, there's been very few grounds that have been empty. And uh, yeah, it's just been. It seems to have been a really, really nice experience for people who have gone over there as well. So I think they've uh, they've done really well, and I'm sure they've ex exceeded a lot of people's expectations. Um, so yeah, I don't think we would think twice about obviously having anything like that over there there again, which obviously for them must be must be proving that they can do you know uh, good things <laughs> as well as, as as bad things. But yeah, but it's um, it seems to go on really well. Uh, I said at the start, my dark horses will be Peru. I was really, really proud of how I know they didn't get through group but I was actually really proud of how Peru played I think they put on a really good account of themselves the football I played was really nice yes I know they didn't win or anything but you know, they still you can tell they can play football and hopefully if they develop a few of them young players they've got a team for their future um, also that um, lad that played for Panama on their left hand side is it Rodrigo Rodriguez he looked very very talented I'm not I'm sure some uh, team will definitely be uh, looking at him I'm surprised he hasn't got into talks with any teams so far um, but for me, player of the tournament, if I was had to name so far a player of the tournament, I think it's going to be Mbappe for me. I know he kind of had that one game where he was diving all over the place a little bit, and that bit was a little bit, you know, dodgy, but he's just impressed me so much. He just looks like an absolute nuisance every time he gets on the ball. He looks so confident, and rightfully so. And and obviously, he's got age on his side. I think he's, he's, he's going to be... I don't know, it's scary how good he already is. And he's he's already got, um, you know, the potential to be even better, um, which is ridiculous because he's already already pretty talented. Um, so, yeah, I think if you, ha if you had to choose one player so far for me, and obviously he's gone to the final as well, it has to be Mbappe so, so far for me. But there's a lot of other ones. Lozano was really impressive as well. I think he did well, obviously, in a, you know, not the best Mexican team, but still a very surprisingly well-oiled and well, uh, you know, tactically aware and inept team in, in Mexico. Uh, like, I like their style of play very much so. And, uh, yeah, Lozano played really, really well in that as well. And to be fair, I was supposed to, I, I, if I had to pick a, a surprise nation of the whole tournament, the, the, well, than England, to be fair, because obviously England did surprise me. Uh, but, yeah, if I had to pick out a, a team that surprised me the most um, in the, the World Cup, it would have to be Germany, and for all the wrong reasons. Um, because they just, how could a team full of that many good players just not play? It, it honestly looked at some points that they didn't care, not all of them, I'm not saying all of them by the way, but it did look like some of their players just did not care either. Just could not be more bothered that they were losing and potentially needing to not to the World Cup. Thomas Muller looked like he was playing his heart out in that last game. Um, going out. Manuel Neuer just did, obviously unfortunately he you know maybe had a little bit too much passion. 
Um, Tony Cruz looked like he was still raring for it, but it just looked like some of their players, I'm not naming them, but just looked like they just honestly could not have cared less that they were going to be knocked out, um, which is disappointing. So they're my surprise team of the um, just how bad they were. But yeah, there we go. That pretty much wraps it up. All in all, really, really happy. Hopefully now England can go on. Uh, on uh, tomorrow if I upload this on time which I probably won't do and um, on Saturday he, he probably he probably already been played now we all do know all the results how, how well I'm good at how well I'm good at how well I'm good at English as well how good I am with YouTube and uploading um, but yeah let me know your thought guys uh, obviously on all the kind of things I've talked about any kind of things you disagree with uh, who's your star player of the World Cup Who's your been your surprise team at the World Cup? Uh, you know, how did your nation get on? All that kind of good stuff in the comment section down below. And if you have enjoyed this one, then don't forget to show your support by dropping a like on the video. I've been just Mike Plays. I'll speak to you legends soon. This is just Mike Plays. Yeah, y'all better listen to what just Mike says. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is just Mike Plays. Yeah, y'all better listen to what just Mike yeah. says. Yeah, this is yeah. just Michael Plays. He be on that football manager, he plays it for days But he still is like an amateur, he's stuck in his ways He'll never finish a series, listening to what he says Then do the opposite clearly, I mean come on man you play And spell the mic with the one, only upload once a month I mean what's up with this drunk, subscribe to Just Mike Plays He's got the dopest of content, you know my flow is so constant